Great to have you join us once again on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. First major conversation for today is in Anambra State. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared uh, Professor Chukuma Soludo, former CBN governor, the winner of the Anambra State governorship elections. Uh, of course, uh, he uh, came first, uh, you know, second to the, or rather followed by the PDP candidate, Valentine Uzigbo, and of course the APC candidate, Andy Uba, finishing third. Uh, there's, of course, uh, some, you know, little details here and there as to the elections and how the, event the elections fared, uh, seeing the number of uh, voters that eventually have declared or determined uh, the uh, winner of that election, um, you know, just barely a little above 200,000 votes um, in a state that had about 2.5 million registered voters. And extra details here and there that we're going to be talking about. We're speaking this morning with the director, Igbo Leadership Development Foundation, Dr. Law Mefo. Good morning, Dr. Mefo. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for hosting me. Thanks for joining us. All right, so let's get your reactions. Um, first of all, um, there was a little bit of disappointment with the time that it eventually took before Chukuma Soludo was, eventually, was uh, then declared winner. Uh, the idea of supplementary elections... You know, the idea that Ihiala be became, you know, you know, almost a full, you know, state. And I, I you know, had to struggle with, you know, elections in just one local government area. And some of those extra things, um, extra details here and there. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I think um, that uh, all is well that ends well. And um, despite uh, the hurdles that uh, all the actors had to really skip get to this point, they were able to finish. And um, uh, generally, generally, the election could be better. But if you really check the circumstances that led up to it, uh, you cannot but agree that this is about the best we can pull off. Um, so much insecurity. And um, even in uh, Ihiala, you, you, you see the issue of insecurity also cropped up yesterday, suddenly, unexpectedly. Because uh, as many as uh, six uh, communities, you know, could not uh, vote because INEC could not mobilize to those places because of insecurity. Uh, but generally, the um, was a um, uh, it was a, was was a fair game. It was fair. Um, the biometric uh, voter identification um, machine didn't work well, um, except yesterday uh, at Ehiala. It worked well. Maybe they used the experience of Saturday to be able to uh, correct them, uh, that of Ehiala. And uh, the report we got was that. Uh, the beavers worked fairly well in Ihiala. But it was a big factor in a Saturday uh, election and um, a very big factor. And you see, if you look at the number that uh, eventually voted, a little over 200,000, like you said, it's um, it, one of the major factors attributable to it should be the, the bioelectric, biometric machine that didn't uh, function as expected. Uh, uh, many say voter party, I don't share that uh, position. I believe enough an agrarians came out, but um, many of them couldn't uh, be captured. And on Saturday too, they, we have some places that elections were canceled, so the, 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 the figures cannot uh, reflect in the final figures that you just uh, read out. So I think that all considered, we should um, uh, be thankful to uh, an agrarians for their courage to come out and um, really uh, conduct themselves in an exemplary manner. We have to thank uh, the security operatives. They were fairly professional. We have to even uh, thank uh, the president of Nigeria who uh, did not interfere uh, in the electoral process. It's not. Um, strange to find that uh, the federal uh, might interfering in state elections. So we didn't see that play out uh, uh, in Anambra. So we must, uh, uh, you know, congratulate uh, the, the president and the federal government. And of course, Heineck. The yeah, but, Heineck, but, Heineck, Heineck, Dr. Heineck, Dr. Heineck did a great job. Dr. Mefo, apologies yes. for stepping in here. 
Um, yeah. I just want you to clarify on why the federal government needs to be congratulated for not influencing the elections with federal might. You see, you see, um, the reports of past elections have um, implicated um, federal agencies in uh, interference in state elections. And um, you, you will see even the security agencies will be partisan in favor of, uh, of um, a, a, a candidate to a political party. It's not my opinion, it's reports of INEC, and it's there for journalists and others who are interested to look at. It, but I am saying that um, we didn't see uh, much of that at that election, so it's worth congratulating. You know, so it, it, for me, it's fair and square. I listened to the APC um, state um, uh, agents um, giving reasons why he wouldn't uh, sign the result sheet or like other political parties that did. Uh, Chibuzo Obiako was saying that they didn't uh, um, agree with the process and the outcome, that they needed to go to the drawing board and uh, decide what to do. I think they should congratulate uh, Professor Tsuludo. Um The problems they identified were not suffered by a candidate alone. It, it cut across, everybody suffered it. And um, I believe that uh, Soludo really won, and that uh, nobody should try to diminish the value, the value and the essence of this victory. It's victory for democracy. Uh, I believe that um, uh, it, it, Anambra people choose Soludo. There is no doubt about that. They choose him because if you check, if you look at it, out of 21 local government areas, he outrightly won in, in, in 19. I think that is quite overwhelming. He was required by law to win in 14, but he went almost to the whole hog. And then in the two local governments where, uh, where he didn't win outrightly, he came second, very close second. Uh, if you check uh, Obaru, for example, where, uh, where the PDP won, uh, he, 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 he came he, he, he less than uh, two, three hundred votes separated him uh, from uh, the PDP. So I, I believe he won. Anabra chose him. He has been a veteran. He is a formidable personality. And um, Anabra people actually choose personality, not party. I don't think um, there is so much uh, for Abga being uh, uh, the ruling party in uh, Anambra State. I think the personality of Soludo played a more or greater role. And um, a, 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 the two other rivals, uh, the a, APC, for example, it, you know, the, the party, the, the selection process of their, of their flag bearer was really tainted. And um, if you see the problem of uh, the margins of, uh, of uh, Andy Oba, you will see why he had uh, this kind of outcome. Because, for example, he, 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 the, the, the INEC said there was no primaries. Uh, party leaders in Anambra uh, of uh, the AP, APC uh, divide said there, there, there was no primaries. The Senator Chris Ngige, for example, is the foremost uh, political office holder uh, of uh, the APC divide in Anambra. He said there was no primaries. But the party went on ahead to uh, say that uh, there was primaries. And in the primaries, 230,000 members voted for Andy to become their flag bearer. So where were these people in the final election? If indeed 230,000 uh, party members choose it, if, uh, if uh, half of that number came out to vote for him in uh, the final uh, election, the governor elect today. So something is wrong about uh, the process. And the same thing can be said about uh, the emergence of uh, of a uh, um valentine was ago and they they, they they all tainted and even that of a uh, uh, soludo cannot be said to be perfect also but uh, his uh, personality was able to really rub off on all this uh, and they redress so many um ills that, that have come um against him uh, to uh, make him not to do well in this election but he was able to uh, overshadow all that and they match victorious. I think we should all uh, work together, uh, like uh, the YPP uh, candidate, Senator uh, Ifanyo Bam, has uh, already 
congratulated him or indicated that he would congratulate him. I expect uh, I expect uh, uh, Andy Oba and um, Val was able to do exactly the same. You know, th this this election does not um, require anybody going to tribunal, wasting more money and all that, hoping to uh, have a dramatic uh, uh, upturning of uh, the outcome as happened in Imo. I don't think uh, the circumstances uh, exist for that. You know, uh, and so I am appealing to all concerns to um, they try and do something for the interest of peace so that uh, Soludo and his team uh, would um, settle down quickly to the task of uh, transforming the state into the Dubai of Africa like he promised. I think, I think his manifesto is quite interesting. And uh, he all should right. be given all the cooperation he needs to pull off that stunt. And uh, he is capable of doing that. He is a man of vision. And um, a risk taker. You don't remember his right, uh, revolutionary. Dr. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's also, you know, uh, we've actually gotten, you know, some of the points that you have raised as regards, uh, you know, the candidacy yeah. of uh, Soludo and him emerging as the winner of the Anambra governorship elections. Now, let's also look at the conduct of, you know, INEC. I mean, the supplementary elections yesterday, of course, uh, there were a lot of anticipation. However, uh, it turned out the way it turned out, and we do have a winner. But we still have pockets of uh, issues, like INEC not showing up on time with the materials. And, I mean, this is not the first time conducting an election. So one would think that, you know, with... Um, just having that local government Ihiala, it things would actually be different. And then we constantly have INEC, you know, showing up late with these materials and time to start, and all of these issues of beavers not working. I remember that uh, you were the one who also said yes that we're going to send uh, the beavers that worked in the previous election, that was on the sixth, you know, to the supplementary election, and so we would not have any of these hiccups. But we constantly see that INEC over time with the conduct of election is such a big deal. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, and what will be the way forward? I, I think um, I think INEC uh, can do better. I totally agree with you. INEC can do better. They didn't uh, um, test run the beavers uh, machines, and um, it should clearly, especially on Saturday. And I think uh, they need to really return to the drawing board. I wouldn't uh, recommend that they have to jettison um, the machine. It has worked well in some places. Uh, like I also observed, uh, I, I think on your platform yesterday, that my research um, showed that the reverse machine may thrive much better where you have um, 4G network. And um, they need to find out, you know, across the country, because 2023 is here already. And uh, if you really have to rely on that same on that same machine across the country, and uh, what happened in Anambra repeats itself, I think uh, the, the presidential election, particularly, uh, may be mad by it. So they need to find out which network really works for this across the country and deploy appropriately. And uh, I also think that um, the service providers, their signals are not. Um, equal or equally strong in a state in anambra for example where i come from you know in some parts of anambra mtn is strong in some places it's airtel some places it's glow you know and so on and so forth so all these issues you know we have to play rules you know in uh, determining the efficiency of uh, the beaver machine. that said i think there is time i need to return to the drawing board and there is this tardiness that you find on the part of INEC, and I think it has to do with them, um, um, you know, having to rely on uh, ad hoc staff. Of course, they cannot possibly employ all the staff they need for elections. So the issue of ad hoc staff, we still have to play a role. But I think they can be better recruited, better trained, better deployed. Because in Anambra, we all saw that, uh, you know, uh, uh, even within the state capital, where they are um, super high neck officials were still very late in so many places, you know, as late as uh, 10 a.m., 11 in some places at noon, you know, was when they arrived. It's strange. 
So you can't understand what actually happened in such instances. You cannot say it is distance. You cannot say it is rough terrain. It's just, uh, you know, um, what has caused poor preparedness on the part of INEC. Um, there is always room for improvement. And again, Anna Abraham, it may not be a good example to really judge what will happen because uh, there was so much fear. So a lot of the ad hoc staff were actually reluctant. All right. So do you think this um, it happened in uh, the ELID yesterday? Because uh, yeah, you said. Go ahead with your thoughts. I can hear you. We'll definitely catch up. Go ahead yes, with your thoughts. I say I say that uh, I say the insecurity, the insecurity, the threat to the election in the build up, you know, actually accounted for so many things, including the seeming unpreparedness of the uh, INEC, because. Uh, for example, they were not able to really test run the PBAS machines, you know, before deploying on the election day. There ought to have been some mock trials, which I am not sure actually took place. They would have noticed the lapses in terms of the uh, uh, G network, in terms of the uh, um, service uh, providers, uh, strengths, uh, and the internet penetrations, you know, in the various parts of the state. Obviously, these things were not done. And I believe it should be as a result of the fear, the insecurity. They needed to be certain of their own security before they can risk such things. So it, it rubbed off. What I'm saying is that if we are able to de-escalate the insecurity in the country, as happened in Nanabra, I think should be able to be better prepared and will be able to deploy you know manpower in good time without fear or favor but they where they where the ad hoc staff who are not exactly their staff they can pull out you can query the person they you know the individual has volunteered and if uh, there is reason to believe that he or she is not safe he can pull out from the process if uh, the person is your staff you can query even sack as a punitive measure. But how do you punish uh, an ad hoc staff who volunteered to help you for very little uh, stipend? You know, so, and uh, like I said, you and I know that INEC cannot employ all the hands they need. So they must rely on uh, ad hoc staff. The onus is on all of us then to ensure that the ad hoc staff don't feel threatened they, they, they feel free that they can work. You know, they don't have to be molested in some places. You see them beaten up, even killed. You know, they, it's, uh, it's sad. But that's the, that's the situation in the country. So I believe uh, it wasn't a uh, white who in the uh, Anambra, but it can right. be better in subsequent elections. Dr. Mefo. I know they are going to exit and one more state before 2023. All right, Dr. Mefo, I, I want you to now speak on moving forward. Um, like you've said, you, you don't think that there's any need for any, um, you know, lawsuits or any, you know, body challenging the outcome of the elections. Um, yeah. But I, I want you to speak on um, Soludo as governor of Anambra. Uh, you, you know, made a joke earlier about something that he had said, turning Anambra to Dubai, um, which, of yeah. course, you know, is one of the reasons I've seen a, a few people say, you know, you know it, it scared them, actually, when they saw, when they heard that because it sounded just like every other campaign promise, you know, that eventually fails. Um, but what do you think the challenge is ahead for Chukuma Soludo? And what can he really achieve with Anambra, looking at his profile and, um, you, know, you know, the possibilities that exist in Anambra? Anambra is a, a very major state in Nigeria. It's an economic hub. And um, it has uh, also some technological base. You know, the people are inclined to technology and commerce. And I believe that these two factors uh, should form the leverage uh, to whatever Professor Soludo wants to do. Um, as far back as 2010, when Soludo took the first shot at the uh, governorship of Anambra State, I was around, I was in that team, actually. And, um, a, a, we were able to analyze his uh, manifesto and uh, the juxtapose uh, the manifesto, uh, the promises against the possibilities, you know, uh, on ground. And uh, we believe that um, 
with uh, with courage, um, with the um, uh, global outreach, with cooperation of uh, an Ambrarians, that much of his manifesto, you know, was uh, realizable. And uh, the same manifesto is what he improved upon and uh, brought forward. And uh, he believes that uh, that Anabra can be transformed. And I think Anabra can be transformed. And um, uh, what he has to do is to is to um, improve on uh, the you know uh, the process that will turn the state into a smart city. You know where you have you know what I mean by a smart city. A smart city is driven by 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 internet connectivity, in, you know, e-commerce, e-government, e this and e that. It is all possible. I tell you because I recall. When Sumudo was talking about banking consolidation from a uh, patri 5 billion to 25 billion uh, naira in Nigeria, nobody believed it was possible when he was the central bank governor. But he pulled it off. And uh, so much of what he has said in his manifesto concerning Anambra is doable. Anambra has um, uh, the greatest export in terms of um, what you may call uh, um, migrants, you know, uh, 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 people moving from Nigeria to outside. Um, I believe that Anambra, Anambra contributes uh, perhaps the most, you know, of the uh, quality educated the migration uh, of uh, Nigerians to uh, all parts of the world. That means that the manpower he would require to execute his vision is there, you know, in Anambra and in the, in the diaspora. The diaspora community uh, uh, of Anambra is quite rich. They cut across all professions, engineering, medicine, education, you know, astronomy, everything. There's no aspect of human endeavor where you don't find a very top notch that is an agraria, you know, here and there. So I believe that all he needs to do is to provide leadership. He has to be firm, he has to be fair, he has to remain visionary. I see um I see Soludo, you know, being able to surpass. The records of um, P2B, if you ask me, P2B was quite astute. Uh, he, was, he was very strong in security, in education, and this and that. So Ludo should be able to do better. I actually envision, I actually envision for Anambra what, you know, um, uh, uh, Mike Obama, Michael Obama did for the old Eastern region. If you check records, peer review, showed that uh, the old eastern region in the first republic was the fastest growing economy in africa if not in the world under mike Obama, it's born out of vision it's born out of uh, you know astuteness of the uh, uh, vision leadership commitment and really you know staying the course and facing uh, more of governance, more of development than politics. What has happened to most uh, governors in uh, in uh, Nigeria, especially in the southeast, is that they have run government or settlement, where politicians descend on, uh, the, on, on the coffers, and because you want peace, you, you, you will use the government resources to settle them. This is not going to happen under Soludo. It didn't happen under, under P2B. I don't see it happening on that Soludo. If you're not bringing anything to the table and you hope and wish that Soludo will open the covers to settle you, I'm oh. sorry. You may have to, you know, really uh, think again. Oh. So oh. I believe uh, I, I believe that transformation of Anambra on that Soludo is possible as transformation of the banking sector was possible under him. Well, um, he, he has a lot of work to do, obviously. Um, a lot know, of it on Onisha and Okan and Newi, you know, who, that have always been mentioned, you know, as as you know, really, really, you know, great avenues for, for uh, uh, revenue generation. Um, I believe that, of course, those are also parts of the things that you know he's mentioned in his manifesto that he he's going to be investing in. Um, yes, you know, it might yeah. sound interesting to talk about a smart city, but the very basic, you know, you know, requirements for a state to to be, uh, you know, formidable need to be there also and you know we, we are not going to be sure. jumping the gun and trying to make it a smart city when people can't eat when there's no security sure, when there's sure. no roads sure. and basic infrastructure when there's no health care um and so there's a lot of work that needs to be done and you know i'm, I'm guessing that the people of anambra hope that he doesn't disappoint 
Mm. Um, you know, um, will you also expect, you know, that this will change or he will be able to change the narrative of governance um, in the Southeast, um, seeing the criticism that the five Southeastern governors have had in the last long while, especially from the IPOB? Um, will he be able to be different? You see, um, I think uh, Soludo has sympathy for the Biafra struggle. Don't forget, he was um, um, one of the first uh, Igbo leaders to visit Nande Kano in a Kujay prison. I was in that team. And um, he uh, led the team that addressed the first uh, world uh, press conference that uh, sort of uh, ignited the political process that eventually led to um, the bailing of Nande Kano the first time. So uh, I believe that he understands the Biafra struggle. I believe that um, uh, he would uh, be able to uh, help in, uh, in putting uh, things in place that would de-escalate the Biafra agitation uh, for separatism. Uh, Soludo is a nationalist. He wouldn't uh, want um, a sovereign Biafra, but he certainly wants the rights of uh, Ndibo and the rights of uh, every Nigerian, as a matter of fact. He would want restoration of federalism. He would want Nigeria to return to full federal system so that all the regions of the country would have uh, the political space, the economic space, to be able to develop themselves and uh, ensure their own happiness. This is the solution I know. And uh, I do think that uh, he would be able to change the narrative um, he, he is certainly going to be one stronger governor uh, east of the Niger. There is no doubt about that. He has a pedigree. If he doesn't become, then it will become an aberration. It will no longer be him that we have always known. I know him to be courageous. I know him to be humane. I may know him to be fair and firm. He's not somebody you're going to run rough shots over. And uh, he has the reach. He can, he can penetrate the federal government he has worked there. He's in Buhari's economic team. So you can be sure that um, uh, he, he, he will really run a friendly government, a government that can uh, attract enough to, um, to Anambra State. He is also very strong in the international community. He's consultant to you know, IMF, World Bank, you know, over 20 uh, international uh, organizations, many of them monetary. In other words, he should be able to access the funds he needs to develop uh, the state, and not necessarily uh, as loans, but even if uh, loans come, you can be sure he is uh, an economist and they would uh, deploy to the purpose clause for which they were actually secured. Uh, you know, one thing I know is that there won't be waste under him. It isn't going to happen. There can't be waste. You work to in whatever you call yours under his uh, leadership. That's the kind of person you will get. And he believes in merit. He okay. is going to deploy merit. You know, he has to look for the best hands Anna Bra can offer. So I believe that with his uh, with his experience, his exposure, his um, his uh, uh, capacity uh, to penetrate both the national and the international communities. He should be able to connect Anambra totally to the center and to the world. All right, you know, but let's also look at uh, quickly as we begin to coast this down for the want of time. Yeah. Uh, he's been a member of the Economic Advisory Council of uh, Mr. President. Uh, some persons have queried this and saying uh, the Nigerian economy is not faring so well. I mean, if you look at you know our debt profile, uh, the, the rate of inflation. And you know the standard of living of the people. Some persons have queried that, and what impacts you know he can have because being part of the presidential team, economic advisory team, uh, we should see the economy tilting towards a good direction. So, uh, can you share your thoughts on that? If you want, you see um, two things. As as an advisor, you can only advise, and uh, the person being advised uh, can take or leave. That's the way it is. You know, he advised uh, Obasanjo, remember his uh, needs uh, document uh, upon which uh, Obasanjo hinged the economic uh, recovery program. The Nigerian economy did fantastically well under Obasanjo. 
Zuludo was uh, part of that team. In fact, he was uh, uh, the economic advisor at a point. But you see, under Buhari, his, his constraint, number one, he is not the chairman of that team. He is placed under his academic inferior. He is placed under his professional inferior. So, you know, leadership is everything. You know, if, if Soludo were the head of uh, Buhari's economic team and Buhari would take Soludo's advice, you know, for economic recovery, there is no doubt that Nigerian economy would boil as it did under Obasanjo, who listened to Soludo. You know, so it is not his fault. He hasn't run short of ideas. Even the same needs document can still be replicated in this administration. Right. That is Dr. Soludo's baby, baby and great child. So, Dr. Mapo, you know, would, uh, would have yeah. to uh, um, end the conversation here. Uh, Thank we'll you. Say, I guess congratulations to Chukuma Soludo and of course uh, would love to bring you in as quickly as possible again and uh, you know, any Thank updates you. concerning Anambra State. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have All a right. blessed day. You too. And uh, from Anambra, we're back here in Lagos, where we're going to be talking about rescue efforts, search and rescue. We're actually going to be focusing on this a little bit more, uh, you know, in the next couple of days. Uh, the Ikoi building collapses our next focus, and we'll be back after this short break. <laughs>